Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, very much. Um, first, I'd like to associate my remarks with those of uh, Senator Whitehouse of Rhode Island. Um, um, Chair Mallory, I want to applaud the work that you have done so far in releasing an initial version of the Climate and Economic Justice Screening Tool as the Senate author of the Environmental Justice Mapping and Data Collection Act, along with Congresswoman Cori Bush in the House. This has been a longstanding priority of mine, low income and disadvantaged communities, especially those overburdened by pollution, deserve justice and targeted relief from polluted air and water. Some stakeholders in the movement for environmental justice have expressed concern that the tool does not explicitly screen for race and could overlook thousands of disadvantaged census tracts as a result. Others have asked for uh, a system that looks at how burdens uh, interact in order to paint a picture of the cumulative impacts on a community. Uh, Chair Mallory, how is the Council on Environmental Quality continuing to work to take these and other stakeholder concerns into account as it continues the development of the screening tool? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. I appreciate it. Um, and as, as I've said uh, already, the, the work that we're doing on environmental justice is really central to the work that CEQ is, is doing, and the, the screening tool is a very important uh, factor in that. The way that we have structured the, um, the screening tool uh, is directly related to the types of programs that are going to be um, affected by the, um, by the you know, distribution of, of resources. Uh, the Justice 40 initiative is about looking at clean energy projects, about uh, climate re uh, change related projects, about um, some affordable housing issues, issues. And so what we did is to establish criteria that really focus on those issues within the community. So we're, you know, we're identifying communities that have high health um, burdens. We're identifying communities where the climate change impacts seem to be high. We're identifying uh, communities with low education. All of these factors will um, actually allow us to um, focus on the disinvestment that we think is critical for making sure that the underserved communities are addressed. Can I just add, can I just add, so the initial version of the climate and economic justice screening tool has many regions for which there is little or no data, including in tribal uh, communities and U.S. territories. Um, uh, we can't help protect all communities if we don't understand all communities. So are you now going to be filling in the gaps to make sure that all of that information uh, is in fact gathered so that those communities can be served? So one of the things that we did when we announced that we were doing the um, screening tool or putting out the, the beta version of it is that we're um, gonna have a, a NAS study that is helping us with data sets. We know that there are data gaps. We went on the data, we used the data that was um, available at a national level to really um, uh, set up the beginning of the tool, but we know that we need more data, and that is part of um, the effort that will go on even after we release the what will be the final, uh, or at least the operating um, uh, tool. So, so, so after the um, uh, the information is developed, the communities are going to need more than just money or proclamations. They need a seat at the table in order to make sure the government gets this right. How will CEQ support ongoing community interaction with this tool? I mean, I think that we have been um, actually making ourselves available with a number of um, members of the, and of the community and also creating folks who can serve as ambassadors for helping to uh, work with the community on how to use the tool, on, on what's necessary in order to operate it. We know that technical assistance is very important as it relates to communities, and that is something that we, um, that I think that we are working with our agency partners uh, uh, to make sure it occurs. So you're, so you're saying that there will be a way for community members themselves to report their needs for investments in certain areas and comment on the current status of Justice 40 related programs in their area? Yes, absolutely. And even the tool created actually on the tool itself uh, allows for people to be able to submit information if they think we've missed something. That is great. Thank you. And, and just so important, thank you for your great work on this issue. And Chair Mallory, I applaud the CEQ's new final phase one rule to restore the potential of the NEPA process to protect human health and the environment. The National Environment Policy Act is our bedrock statute for bringing the public good into the federal decision-making process. 
The public good is not slowing down good decision making. It enables it. For example, delays in permits for mines are more likely due to plan changes from the applicant than from the NEPA process itself. So for example, on LNG exports, FERC has already permitted facilities that could move 28 billion cubic feet per day of liquid natural gas uh, facilities that uh, just uh, that so far have not yet been built, but that's not a NEPA problem, getting them constructed, but NEPA has already, but the, the, uh, the work has already been done to get them permitted. So sometimes I, I hear you know, concerns, but LNG is a big issue, you know, and it's already permitted. And for the small subset of federal projects that require full environmental impact statements, those projects are longer lasting and better uh, for the fact that the public could weigh in and understand what's happening in their community. Just like on a grade school test, NEPA means big corporations have to show their work in order to get an A. Uh, and that's all NEPA really requires, that the, that the work be produced, that it, it can be examined and it can be done in a, a timely fashion. Um, so I just want to you know, just say I think you're doing a great job on this uh, because without a working NEPA process, small business owners, local community leaders, concerned parents, or other stakeholders would not be able to weigh in uh, on these massive federal projects. Uh, do you agree with that? Absolutely, and I think that is what we are trying to focus on, is particularly with the release of the uh, permitting action plan today, is to really highlight how we can make the process work with the, the values of ensuring that we're doing impact analysis. And you're making sure disadvantaged communities can have their voices. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. The center's time has